UK overseas territories scattered across the globe, from the tropics to the Antarctic. They're among some of the most remote places on the planet. Many are tiny islands lost in the vastness of the ocean. Yet all have been colonized by life, isolated on these pinpricks of land. Those colonists, both plants and animals, have evolved into unique species found nowhere else on Earth. These islands are much more than lumps of rock. They're crucibles of evolution, engines that have driven the creation of new species, changing plants and animals, often in strange and unpredictable ways. Some are so isolated, it's hard to imagine how the original plants and animals found these islands. Some plants, like coconuts, have huge seeds that remain afloat for a long time, allowing them to drift to the most remote places. But on the tiny islands of the Chagos Archipelago, in the Indian Ocean, there are also hardwood trees. Some of these trees have seeds that can stick to the feet and feathers of seabirds, which can easily reach these islands. Beneath the hardwood trees are bird's nest ferns. Their tiny spores are easily blown over vast distances by the wind. This makes ferns great colonizers of remote islands. On Tristan da Cunha in the southern Atlantic Ocean, dwarf tree ferns cover huge areas of this isolated volcano. Here, they have evolved into a species found nowhere else. That same story is repeated 4,000 kilometers to the north on the tiny island of Ascension, just a few degrees south of the equator. This island also has its own endemic ferns. Because islands like Ascension are so remote, they haven't been colonized by predators. And that allows island creatures to become much tamer than those on the mainland. Since the animals have lived here for thousands of years without land predators, they have relatively little fear. These sooty terns don't like the fact that I'm close to their nesting areas. If I sit down and wait a few minutes, they'll calm down and return to their nests. Sooty terns are found right around the tropics, on many islands and many continents. But some animal colonists here have evolved into unique species, and some are very surprising. In brackish pools by the coast, there are two species of endemic shrimps. Their nearest relatives live in caves around the Caribbean, more than 8,000 kilometers away. How they got here is a mystery. But more remarkable still, this is their only home. These little ponds here, this is the entire habitat for two species of shrimps. This is the only place in the world where they occur. Ascension is still a young island, just a million years old. There hasn't been time for much life to colonize it. Even so, with their ability to breed quickly, invertebrates like shrimps 
have been able to evolve into unique species very rapidly. 1,200 kilometers to the southeast of Ascension by St. Helena. This island is much older. It had plenty of time for many plants and animals to colonize it, and plenty of time for this crucible of evolution to brew up new species. St. Helena has many unique plants, and living amongst them, over 460 unique endemic invertebrates, many as strange and wonderful. The spiky yellow woodlouse has abandoned its ancestors' habit of hiding under wood. It now lives on ferns and feeds on their spores. It's joined on St. Helena by the golden sail spider with its strange metallic abdomen. And the scrubwood leafhopper, the Hellenian brown lacewing, the common red scarab, the vulture leafhopper, and Loveridge's hoverfly, and the giant earwig, now extinct. St. Helena also had many endemic birds, though today, like the earwig, most are extinct. The only one remaining is the wirebird, a kind of plover. But many of the UK overseas territories still have their unique birds. Henderson Island is part of the territory of the Pitcairn Islands in the Pacific. It is home to several unique species. The Henderson lorikeet, a tiny parrot. The Henderson fruit dove. And the flightless Henderson rail. And although seabirds can range far and wide over the ocean, one returns to nest only on Henderson Island. The Henderson petrel, adding to Henderson's list of unique birds. Half a world away, on Ascension Island, in the Atlantic Ocean, there is a similar story. Many of Ascension seabirds were wiped out when cats and rats jumped ship and invaded the island. Their only sanctuary was a tiny offshore rock, Boson Bird Island. This is now home to Ascension's unique seabird, the Ascension Frigate Bird. When the Ascension frigate bird was wiped out from the mainland, this is the only place in the world where it survived. About 10,000 pairs live here, and if it wasn't for this island, the species would be completely extinct. The birds are safe here, but the goal of the conservationists working on Ascension is to make the main island safe again as well. A feral cat eradication scheme was completed in 2004 and, soon after, some seabirds began to return to the mainland. But not the Ascension frigate bird. So conservationists tried to convince the frigates by using models. In 2011, these decoys were placed here try and attract the Ascension frigate bird back from Boson Bird Island to the mainland to breed here and start colonizing again. It seemed to work. In late 2012, two pairs of Ascension frigate birds returned back to the mainland. Of those two pairs, 
One failed to raise a chick, the other succeeded. This little fella here in front of me is the very first Ascension frigate bird chick back on the mainland of Ascension for over 180 years. The isolated islands that make up the UK overseas territories have 20 times the biodiversity of the UK mainland. And many of those creatures are found nowhere else on Earth, making the overseas territories vitally important on a global scale in the fight to halt the loss of biodiversity across the whole planet. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini documentaries possible.